What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Untro Mike, back with another video. Um, If you guys are new to the channel, I'm Untro Mike. The Untro is short for entrepreneur. And in this video, man, well, for a quick synopsis, for people who don't know, uh, running a hot shot company, got two trucks right now. Only one currently is over the road, Rob, my driver. Um, And right now, he actually ended up completing his first load, or he's in the midst of doing that. Uh, on the way to Iowa, then we got him a backhaul coming out of Illinois, coming back home to South Carolina. So, right now my nerves are everywhere. That's not why y'all came to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to book partials for, um, specifically for hot shot trucks. All I can really speak on is for non CDL hot shot. Um, but I really feel like this can apply to anybody, whether you're in a box truck, a dry van. Um, really, any new owner operator can take something away from this video when it pertains to booking loads. Before we get deep into it, I just want you guys to like the video. Like the video, I put a lot of effort into this video, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and secondly, I'm going to go ahead and put them out there. DAT, um, if you guys need a low board for free 30 days signing up, check the link in the description. Free of charge, you get free 30 days. If you don't use the link using me, you're going to pay for your first month. So that's some more free game. And let's get into the video. So I kind of had this in like a step process, right? So step one, we're going to go over what a partial is. So I'm going to just read out the screen since I actually made it. Um, a partial can be determined by multiple things, especially by brokers. Um, size and weight, I kind of grouped them together. Time constraint. Um, and can something go with it? Due to them being able to load you or not, that's, that's their main excuse is, is are you coming in empty? Are you are you dedicating the truck? Because if you don't, they won't unload you. Or matter of fact, when you pull up to the shippers, they won't even load the truck. Um, and there are tips and tricks to get away from that being a sneaky carrier, but we're not going to actually even intervene in those practices. We're just going to speak on the the normal days of booking partials, not the ones where you got to be sneaky and lying to this broker and lying to that broker. You can't do that, but it's just a regular way to book partials. Um, as you can see, I said partials may or may not have the same rate as something dedicated, depending on the demand. And usually they're closer to a dollar a mile. So I'm going to actually just go ahead and show DAT low board. Um, this is where Rob is coming out of. Um, now he's picking up in Quincy, Illinois, but, you know, he's coming out of um, Marion, Iowa. So if you guys just look on the low board, I'm going to just show a little bit of this, right? Take a load like this, for instance. We're just going to talk about the trip miles. 754 trip miles on the load board posted for $600. So every partial or what we see as partials, right? You can see right here on the load board, it'll have F slash P, meaning full slash partial. They Sometimes they'll post a dedicated truckload for a partial, depending on the size, or they'll just forget. So... Remember to call on every load, no matter what. Even if you see that low rate, call, give them your reason why. A lot of people, a lot of brokers are just posting quotes. They're just trying to get quotes for the customer. Um, really good brokers usually tend to have a truck um, before they actually quote their customer. I Meaning they'll post something on the load board. They may not win. The, they may have not even won the bid yet, but they kind of want to get an idea of what carriers are willing to take this load for. Um, and then they'll take that to their customer, usually get approved and, you know, and then you actually go through the booking process. So that's step one. Step one, I just really wanted you guys to know the difference between something that's dedicated and something that's a partial and the different things that they use to negotiate against you with. Um, so step two, location, where should you partial? Uh, there are certain lanes that profit more than others when partialing. Uh, Northeast area, Texas, Florida. That's from my experience. So um, my example that I got down below, like I said, I don't travel west of I-35. I'm biased, so this is what I know. Um, but for my example, we got just coming from the Midwest. Let's say from Monday to Wednesday, you got your load to the Midwest. And from Wednesday to Friday, you got the option to pick up partials going to certain lanes. And like I said, the most popular from the Midwest, in my opinion, are usually going to the Northeast. 
um, Texas or Florida. And you can kind of see uh, what, how I differentiate the lanes. So from Midwest to the Northeast, you got high tolls, high fuel, high hotels, but the back haul is really good. Um, Midwest to Texas, low to no tolls, low fuel, low hotels, probably the lowest hotels, honestly. And the back haul is fair. I get fair because I have been stuck in Texas before, but a lot of people really like Texas. But it's a lot of competition in Texas, given that it's one of the biggest states in America. I think, what, the second? Um, then you got Midwest to Florida. Low tolls, average fuel, high hotels, back haul. Really none existing unless you're on the north side. You know, um, anything north of maybe Orlando, Jacksonville area. Um, and then I, I had to put mention the terrain. So... From Midwest to the Northeast, in East Ohio Mountains, PA Mountains, West Virginia Mountains, it's, it's a lot of mountains. It's a lot of mountains, and they're not, you know, 3 to 5% grain mountains, like Tennessee sometimes. They're 7, 8, 9% grain, you know, grade mountains. Midwest to Texas, pretty smooth. Um, Midwest to Florida, pretty smooth. I mean, you got to go down, uh, going out, what, 75, let's say you're on Ohio. Mount's not too bad in Tennessee. It's not as bad as everybody makes it, in my opinion. But Midwest of Texas is probably going to be, out of the options, the cheapest um, cheapest option to partial to it. Now, I, I do a lot of partial in Florida, but that's solely based on me because I live in Georgia. So I took this example for you guys to know, even though I say, basically, if you look at what I got from my experience, Midwest of Texas might be the best lane to partial to due to it being a lot of volume coming in and it's enough volume to get out. Um, from my experience, let me keep saying that. But at the same time, that's not what always works for me because I like to go home, if not every weekend, every other weekend, um, you know, to actually see my family. So do what works best for you. Um, and just know no matter what you do, you know, make the best out of it. Step three, you should know how much to charge for a partial. Now, I can't tell you how much to charge for a partial. You need to know your own cost to operate. You need to know your cost per mile. Um, of course, a dollar cost analysis. Um, take all the expenses, divide it by 100,000 miles. I got a whole video if you want to learn how to calculate your cost per mile the way I do mine. Um, but there are tons of informational videos on how to calculate your cost, um, cost to operate. And just try not to book any partials under that. But the key things that matter is the length. How much of my trailer is it taking? If I have a 40-foot hotshot load, a 30-foot load is not a partial. Um, and also, you know, they'll say, okay, it's 30 feet, but it's only a foot wide. Okay, they got kind of a point, but, you know, that's, that's just not how you want to run things. I would more so go based on length before I go on width. Um, and then you got weight. A thousand pound partial is different from a five thousand pound partial. That's different from an eight thousand pound partial, especially when you're non-CDL and you're, you know, you can only you're limited to how much weight you can carry. Realistically, eight to ten thousand pounds. Um, so if you got a seven, eight thousand pound partial that's paying a dollar thirty, you can't add nothing to it. So that partial load for you just turned into a dedicated rate that you need to charge. If they can't meet you at that, you need to let it go. Then distance, base it off your cost per mile and don't book under your cost to operate. That's like the basics of uh, step three. That it doesn't don't take my advice for what you should charge for a partial. That should be biased to you and what it takes for you to be profitable. Um, and the time, when does it need to be delivered? If if it's Wednesday and I pick up a partial, a partial, in my opinion, shouldn't have to deliver till Monday. If they want you to go a thousand miles in two days, that that's dedicated. I mean, that's I mean, you can't go a thousand miles in a day legally. It's gonna take you two days to get there. So you want it by Friday, you want it dedicated. Um, and charge according to that. Whatever your cost to operate is, um, before profit and add a dollar amount to it. So my cost of operations in around is around a dollar ten, a dollar twenty before profit, I'll charge two twenty to two thirty you know, at least loaded, you know, to be a dedicated rate for me. Charge three if you want to. Charge four if you can. Step four, what time of the week should you partial? Now, I know you guys have been seeing that I've been kind of hinting towards 
uh, Wednesday. Only reason why I say Wednesday and maybe Thursday is because partialing at the beginning of the week can be very dangerous, in my opinion. Now, you want to partial when you can, and you want to have enough distance to make up for partialing. You want to have at least a two-day trip in order to partial. Michael, what the hell are you talking about? Basically, if you pick up a load on Monday, it's 20 feet, you got a dedicated rate, and you want to slap some up, you know, slap something else on there, but it's only going 300 miles from Georgia to North Carolina. You are going to stress yourself out trying to find another partial to go to North Carolina with it. It can happen sometimes, and it can be a great day for you. Um, but you just gave yourself another drop. That load probably ain't going to pay nothing, and you're probably just going to end up wasting your time. You're telling me, man! And I got to start partialing on Wednesday to have enough time, usually for error. You know, if a load drops, you'll have time to get another one. Um, and make sure they can deliver Monday if needed. If needed. Um, cause I also like partialing on Wednesday with two day trips rather than Thursday, because if I want to be empty by Friday, I can by Thursday, if it's a two day trip legally, I'll have to drop it on Monday. So that's where that comes from. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty much common sense, but a lot of people always ask me, Mike, how do you partial? So I'm just giving like a real basic synopsis on how we think when we book loads and I'm. I'm not speaking for everybody. This is just for me and my personal experience. I partial all the time. The past two to three weeks, I actually been partialing every week. I just ended up being able to have a low with a dedicated rate and slapping a partial on to it. Um, that's more. That's more of my thing, though. I can't take two lows that pay a dollar fifty a piece because both of those lows are under my cost to operate. God forbid one of them drop, and I'm left with a loss. A step five. Know your lanes and negotiate. Step five is know your lane. Now, when you're brand new, you're going to learn that over time. So you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be perfect. I'm still learning myself. So, um, but these are some basic tips on how to negotiate. I'm not going to sit here and do a whole call, but explain why you need more to work without being a you know what. If a, if a broker posts that, like that load going 750 loaded miles, for $600, he may only have that much in it because he quoted that customer without having a truck. He might be trying to hustle somebody. Not all brokers play fair. I get it. But some of them literally post those, those rates just to see what carriers will bite. You don't have to bite. You can just give them your honest opinion, how much you think that, that freight is worth. If they can meet you, if they can meet you in the middle, they can get close to your cost. Go for it. That's your that's your business. That's your trucking company. If you can make it work and I can't, you win. Um, that's just kind of how it is. It's a dog eat dog world in the trucking industry. From what I've seen so far, um, use hotels, fuel, average lane rates to negotiate. Um, explain why you'll be a better fit than the next guy. So if you're thirty miles away, twenty miles away, throw that in there. Hey, I'm twenty thirty miles away. I can go pick this up as soon as possible rather than the next guy who may have called before and offered the same rate might be a hundred miles away. You might get it. You know, don't be one of them guys that book it for $50 less, but you know, do what you got to do. If you got to, um, lastly, start booking with DAT, man. Y'all just seen, I just dropped the link, link in the description for a free 30 days. Um, same thing for a free fuel card with RTS. I just had to throw that in there. Um, and that's really it. The biggest, um, advice I can give to you guys is just be honest over the phone. Don't be an hour away saying you're 20 minutes away because, you know, when they ask for tracking and they see it, they may take you off the load. And just be respectful. Um, let the broker know you want to work with them. And they know there are some brokers who feel like you work for them. And, you know, do what you got to do. Handle your business. But it's your boy, Intro Mike. I hope this video helped. Like I said, to me, this is like a lot of basic information, but I think it can be looked as, um, I think a lot of people will enjoy just seeing content like this instead of something negative all the time. Just some informational, especially for the uh, new guys looking to get out here in this industry and have no clue what a partial really is. This is just five steps that I say, you, sh you know, should actually take in consideration before just hopping on a load board and booking your first load for 70 cents a mile. Um, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. But I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I got a couple more videos I'm planning on making probably today or tonight. 
Um, so just stay tuned to the channel. Hit the subscribe button if you ain't already subscribed. Like the video. Drop a comment on what you want to see next. Peace.